Lift up the light of your face on us, O oh Lord. You have put into my heart a greater joy. Lord, let your face shine on us. In peace I will lie down and fall asleep. For you alone, O oh Lord, make me dwell in safety. Lord, let your face shine on us. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. That, we, that the way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus, open the scriptures to us. Make our hearts burn while you speak to us. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet, that it is myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. But they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed. He asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, they are my, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, 
Thus it is written that the Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in the name of all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. These, today's gospel, Jesus is telling us some truths that we need to always remember. Truths that not only he himself is telling us today, but we have heard through the voice of Peter in the first reading, through the voice of John in the second, and through many other different historic facts throughout you know the life of all of us historians uh, from Judea from Rome they have actually put this the crucifixion into the books so this is just something that is absolute truth and what are those first and foremost and the most important one, and where our faith is based, where our faith resides, that Jesus Christ resurrected. That he is not a hallucination, that he is not a ghost, as is being read today in the gospel, that he is a reality. He is a true human being who died, and resurrected. And to prove that today to his disciples, he asked for food. And he has fish. A ghost will not be able to eat anything. You have to be able, you need to be a human being in order to be able to eat. That's clear. A ghost, a spirit, cannot eat. It's a human being who eats. Because we are the ones who need that for our sustenance. The second truth that Jesus puts right in, the fr in front of the faces of all his apostles is that the cross was needed. That it was not put on his shoulders as an obligation. That he took that freely. And he went through that ordeal on his own terms and on his own will. But it had to be happen because it was planned, it was part of the divine plan, part of our salvation. Without that cross, none of you or me will obtain salvation. It needed to happen. And so that's why he himself shows to his apostles his wounds, his hands, his side. That is the truth. And therefore, we, that thanks be to God, don't have to go to that, through that cross. We are never asked to go through that cross. We need to embrace also the reality of our own crosses. We have to stop listening to what the world keeps telling us over and over and over. Do not suffer. See, everything in today's world is like that. Look at on, on television and every single announcement you see, it has to do with something to avoid pain. Whether it's Advil, whether it's... Uh, What's, the, what's this new uh, uh, cream that prevents the joint pain? Uh, Voltaren, there you go. That we, now we can buy, uh, you know, without prescription. Uh, aspirin, uh, whatever, you name it. 
that we are to be happy people. Forget about everything. Don't pay attention. You know, ignore the things that will make you unhappy. No, no, no. We cannot ignore them. We need to embrace them. It is so sad to see in today's world how we are so indifferent of the pain of others, including those who are next to us. Needless to say, the pain around the world in other countries. The pain that we ourselves in our nation were going through. There's so many things that we ignore so that we don't feel bad about it. Yeah. We have to embrace our cross. The third truth is there is an urgency in the mission, in the mission that we all are being called to. That we need to believe and to repent and to forgive. The church was never, was never meant to be constantly in the upper room. The church was sent out by Christ himself. And, and he clearly said, go out around the world and baptize everyone in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And that means that we, we have to continue with that. That what we know and what we learn here cannot just remain here in these four walls. That he has to go out and be part, an active part of our homes, of our workplaces. That we're not offending anyone by telling them the truth. That we are just doing what we're supposed to. If people want to take the truth for its value, good. If they don't, Good, we did what we had to do. If the disciples would not have done what they did, could we be standing here today celebrating what we are celebrating? The Eucharist? No. So what makes us think that we are not supposed to do the same? My dear brothers, that is our mission. And there is an urgency for that mission to be done as we hear that in the gospel because Jesus himself sent them send them all out and the fourth truth is the secret which is not a secret but the secret of the power of the Holy Spirit it is through the power of the Holy Spirit that the church moves it is through the power of the Spirit that each and every one of you move in the faith. The apostles had to wait in the upper room until the Spirit came upon them. And when that happened, they got out of the room on fire. And on fire to the point of death. I don't know about you, but to me it's fascinating. It's very fascinating how to see the lives of Peter, John, Paul, and all the disciples. If you read their lives and what they accomplish, it's an incredible, an incredible adventure that they took upon without fear, without hesitation. But it was the power of the Spirit. That power that we receive, all of us first in our baptism. That it, it was cemented in us the day of our confirmation. That it is nurture every time we receive the Eucharist. That's why it's so important for us to be here. For us to come here to receive the Eucharist. We need to prudently stop being at home for those who follow us. If you can, come. This is the place where we receive our water. Just like these wonderful plants that are here that I saw 
Maria Elena watering before the, the, the mass so they can continue flourishing as they are, beautifully, you know, shining. But they need water. If you don't put water, they will die. If we do not receive the spirit, we will die. We may have existence, but we will die. Come, get nurtured by the, by the Eucharist. Allow the power of the Holy Spirit to touch you, to get into you, to consume you, so that you could have an impact in your own life, in the lives of those you love, and then in the life of everyone that is around you. That, my dear friends, is what we need to do. We need to trust in Christ. That's what we celebrated a week ago. The divine mercy. I trust in you, Jesus. But it cannot just be words. Words need action. And that action has to happen first in ourselves. We have to allow our heart, our heart to be transformed by him, by the only one who can do it. No one else can do that transformation. Only him, Jesus Christ. So that when we believe in his resurrection, then we can embrace our cross. And by embracing our cross, then we can get out and tell the people, everyone, that we have a God who is an incredible God that is constantly looking out for us, that is constantly inviting us to be better and better so that then we, with that, show the world that we are moved by the Spirit of God. I love what St. John says in his letter. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars. And the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. Brothers and sisters, this is not about fulfilling a law. This is not about obe being obedience, although th there is obedience involved in our faith. It's about believing. And because we believe, then we act upon that belief. Don't let the world keep turning you around and covering you with lies. The truth is here. And we need to make a difference in this world. We are the apostles. We have been baptized and became followers of Christ. E each and every one of us. And therefore, let, let us take upon that task. Let's not be liars. Let's be his disciples. I guarantee you, you will not regret it. And you will never be happier in your life than when you walk with the truth. One day, I will share with you my story, my vocation story. And I can tell you this, and with this I finish. If I had to do this all over again, I will become a priest once again. No doubt, I have never had a life as beautiful as the one that I have now. I have never felt more complete as I am now. And I don't think that I will ever be unhappy because God is with me. Not just because I became a priest, but because I became his follower. If we're going to give an applause, that will be to our Lord. And that I welcome. Not me. We're here because of him. And we are moved 
because of him. Dear brothers and sisters, let us stand. And as a family that we are, profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of a Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, come substantial with the Father, to him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on a third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus, was made known in the breaking of the bread. Our minds and hearts are open as we pray. Let the church be ever thankful for the gifts of the earth and the graces that flow from the real presence of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That government leaders revere the sanctity of life from conception to natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the unemployed and the underemployed be comforted by God who knows all needs and the longings of their hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of this congregation, united in love and service, be perfected in love of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the deceased, especially our parishioners, family, and friends, may they rest in eternal life with Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for the members of the parish family for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, hear us as stewards of these Easter mysteries. We offer these prayers in the name of Jesus, our resurrected Lord, and through the intercession of our blessed mother, the Virgin Mary, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death, amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of life rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your, pray, in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power of the, and the working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and made them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to his setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. <clears throat> and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, when, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O 
Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognize in the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Therese of Lisieux, the little flower, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Archbishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestowed on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honors is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say a word and my soul shall be healed. Ministers of Holy Communion will go to the balcony so you don't have to come down. Let me just remind everyone uh, that as we continue exercising prudence and going through this pandemic, this side of the church will come to the deacon over here. This side of the church will come to me at the center. There will be ministers in the center and in the over there as well. So we will continue doing this. Remember as well that you will come with your mask into the right in front of the ministry, the minister, the deacon, or myself. You remove it, you receive, whether in the hand or in the mouth, you cover up, and then you go. Please consume Christ in front of the minister. We believe he is our Lord. And so we need, for us, it's very important to know that everyone receives him properly. So consume it in front of the minister, deacon, or priest.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A few announcements. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to welcome um, a group who has been in retreat this weekend uh, from the community, Communion and Liberation Community who has joined us here. Can you raise your hands, please, if I may ask. There you go. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for taking the time to get into retreat, to learn more deeper into our faith. Uh, remember that beginning tomorrow, ministries will resume their activities. If you want to know what kind of ministries we have, page three of our bulletin has the daily ministries, where do they meet, the time, etc. So please make sure you check, you check that. As well, the Blessed Sacrament Chapel, the Chapel of St. Joseph in our office parish will open for adoration beginning now during um, office hours from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., right? And so if you want to come to adoration, make sure you go to our uh, website. Uh, the parish website so you can register uh, for a specific time. We have to continue exercising prudence so the, t the space is limited so make sure you go and register yourself. They can only be, listen, they can only be six people at, together at a time. And so we have eight hours throughout the day for now so just go there, register yourself, and you can come and adore our Lord. I think that's it, right? The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful weekend and a beautiful week. Please join in singing our recessional hymn at the Lamb's High Feast we sing found on page 5 of your bulletin. <laughs> 